everybody? Couple, couple of things. I want you to have fun tonight, okay? This is a really enthusiastic, appreciative audience. They're your fans, okay? So don't forget to smile. And don't forget when you're done with your act to take a moment and allow them to applaud you. And don't, don't slink off the stage. Take the moment, okay? Now, one other thing. Things happen, okay? So go with the flow, okay? Just things will, if things go awry, just keep going, okay? We'll figure it out. This is, this is the, the joy and the torture of live theater, but just be with it. Okay, it's five to seven. We are starting in 10 minutes, so have a good show. Thank you. I think we have a community that's not a community. A community means we assume responsibility for each other. That's not happening uh, in the gay community. And I think we're really at that division point, and that really is very upsetting to me, because I think there is where the initial uh, liberating potential and, and promise, you might say the Holy Spirit of being gay, we're, we're mm -hmm. on the verge of not only not understanding what that is, but losing it entirely. What is one of the most needed things in our community today? Uh, of all, everything that's going on or not going on, what would be the most needed? And came up with the idea of trying to spotlight the creative imagination of young gay and lesbian people and give an evening where we get to see some of the talent of young gay people, poets, writers, musicians, etc. When Don Kilhefner and Mark Thompson talk about community, they really mean it. Between them, Don and Mark have more than 60 years of service to the gay community. Uh, Don founded the Gay and Lesbian Center here in LA some 25 years ago, and it's still one of the largest in the country. And Mark essentially built the Advocate magazine to what it is today, one of the best and only news magazines exclusively devoted to our community and our culture. These guys really are elders in our community. Well, I mean, Prince Papagok is pretty much the gayest man on earth um, and, and very proud to, uh, to be a peacock and to be very visible. And it seems like, you know, we're supposed to be the um, kind of the, the arbiters of taste and the, the protectors of the, the arc of style and, and all this stuff, but that's, it's, it's a lie these days. If you look around at gay culture and it, you almost feel cheated as a young man growing up and that to, um, to be outwardly gay appearing, to be flamboyant is, um, it's almost revolutionary, as revolutionary now as it ever was. So it's sort of eclectic trying to touch all the, the different kinds of performances. The unifying theme is they're young, they're gay, and they have something to say. But what's it like being gay and being a rapper or hip hop artist? Well, it's definitely a struggle. Yeah. And we were asking them, what is a gay voice? Are you out and what, was, what did it mean to come out? And what does it mean for you to be gay? You know, just being out in general is hard for somebody young to come out and then so set, trying to say it to you know the whole world is like 
whoa, you know? So what are you here for? What are you doing? I read poetry. Cool. What are your poems um, mostly about? Do they connect in any know? way? Or? No, but I tell humorous stories beforehand. Loss. My boyfriend got really drunk and then I kind of didn't, I kind of couldn't talk to him because I had to go to work and then he kind of broke up with me over the phone and I was devastated and wrote this poem. Okay, you know what, this... Okay, so the, the, it's not funny. I'm oh like, yes. <laughs> That's, wow. quite, that's quite humorous. for the punchline? It all gets back to what is the kind of community do we want to live in? And we know that the gay community has a lot of problems. I mean, it has a lot of, it's a, it's a fabulous com community or group of communities, I should say. But you know, the crystal meth epidemic is really out of control now. Um, the problems facing our youth are as uh, tantamount in some ways as they always have been. I'll tell you where I got really invested in doing this. I think it was about two years ago. The Gay Pride Parade here, Christopher Street West, made Paris Hilton I just will never get over this. Made Paris Hilton the Grand Marshal. And I went, no, 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 no. Not after everything we've been through. Okay, so you're in positions now, come on. So let's take it from you, you're on stage, okay? So the, you're on stage. So once I start you, you need to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, okay? So they can all take a bow, okay? You want to do the whole number again? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so right. the one thing is that Justin, I'm gonna meet you over here a little bit more. Yeah, we got two minutes, we got then we gotta stop. And I said, now Stephen, see you're in a wonderful lineage of poets. He just his mom had to drop him off, you know, he's tired. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Confess, my son. Yesterday I sold two dollars worth mother's purse. The, the Lord forgives you. What we're trying to do is develop a consciousness in the, in the community that uh, youth needs the help of adults. And a day before that, I said a bad word. And a day before that, I made Tony cry. The Lord forgives you. Is that all, my son? Well, today, I kissed a boy, and I liked it. One of the things that I'm most interested in is uh, giving people a chance to find their voice. What is their voice? If, as, as I contend and other people contend, that our gayness is central to who we are, it means that there is a central gay voice in there that wants to be heard, that sees the world a little bit differently. And that, that voice has to be found, it has to be developed, it has to be encouraged. Rise Up couldn't have come at a better time. We just had that awful election that split up the country into red states and blue states, and everything felt polarized. We were sitting around and, and saying to each other, what, what can we do, if anything? And essentially what we came up with was, let's look into our own community and let's look into what the issues are there. And what we found was there was certainly a split there that was not so much political as it was generational. We had gay adults and we had gay youth, 
But the two groups never talked to each other and were never able to work together or really help each other out. And so that's what Rise Up and Shout really became about. It became about building a community. So I was thinking when we were working on the poster, I showed it to a few people and they're like, well, who is this for? My favorites are these. And I really like this because it's the Hopefully modern. people will, will feel connected to the next generation of gays and lesbians. And it's really all about that too, the intergenerational thing. It's important that older gay people and older lesbians look at young people not as sex objects, but as human beings with, a, with something to say. Too often the only times our generations cross is when it's like um, uh, sexual or financial or something like that. These are controversial in my opinion. I don't think we want to go there. And the faces look both I know for me, in terms of what I wanted to contribute to this, I just didn't want to have a, a show that was up with people or that was all just like Broadway style vocalists, you know, or, or something that would be boring. If I'm going to be involved in this, I want it to have balls. I want it to be something cool. Basically, what we're going to do today is we have about 65 posters and those leaflets uh, back there, okay. two boxes of them. And we're going to go down Santa Monica Boulevard and we're going to ask play, at places where uh, gay people would congregate. Yeah. It can be lots of fun. I enjoy doing it. And here's the other reason too, calling, even calling the youth who are interested with talent, it connects you with that, with that yeah. energy. And, and it, it, yeah, it's just, I'm looking forward to it. What the gay liberation movement was about was identity, creating a positive identity. It was about community building. It was a value system that included being responsible for each other. And one of the things about today with young people is that they're so used to such a watered down gay culture that they don't realize that there was a time, particularly uh, as a result of gay liberation, there was a time when uh, there was a vibrant, alive, engaged gay movement in this country. Next up is uh, John. Is John here? <laughs> yes, John. John. And I will be dressed very differently. Okay. Yes. La guapa tot nella città la ro. La 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 la. Presto a bottega che la vecchia presto. La 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 la. Tutti mi chiedo, tutti mi voglio. Donna ragazzi, i vecchi fan cool, quale parrucca? Presto la mamma, tutti mi chiedo, tutti mi chiedo, tutti mi voglio, tutti mi chiedo, tutti mi voglio, tutti mi chiedo, quale parrucca, presto la mamma, presto mi chiedo, eh! Figaro, sono il fettotum della città, sono il fettotum della città, della città, Della città. John, you remind me uh, of myself in my uh, early 20s, actually, uh, because I was in Hollywood and I didn't have any money. And I was ambitious and uh, creative. But more than that, more than the poverty and the hunger was that struggle. Internal struggle. Wanting the pure creativity mm -hmm. that you have, I know you're thinking of. Mm -hmm. And then having to compromise. Mm -hmm. It's terribly difficult to be yeah. an artist. Uh, and it's just a lot of punishment and rejection. And, and of course, a high percentage of creative people are gay. 
one thing that you have to be is if you're gay, you just have to be brave enough to be yourself. The legacy has, for all of us, I think, been hugely, uh, awfully difficult. Mm -hmm. The hard part for me is um, <laughs> I, I just, I have this real kind of nihilist in me. And the hard part for me is shutting the, shutting those voices up is, is telling the voices saying that, um, <clears throat> that there is no point that, uh, that nothing comes of nothing comes of nothing, that there's no meaning in anything that, um, it's, you know, it's all the dark, it's the darkness. It's, it's, you know, and it is one of the big reasons why I do Poppycock because it's it, it was because I wanted to inspire other people. I wanted to cast away the shadows for other people. I mean, do you like what's your um, do you have any secrets for casting away the the darkness? What helps me a lot is um, well, consciously simplifying. Mm hmm. And so there's a kind of letting go that's very helpful. Is it just, because I have a hard time with that, is that, and focus, so focus and consciously simplify, and so just bring it down to, to a single focus, yes. instead of trying to kind of grasp everything and control Is letting everything. everything go that's the key, I think. Mm -hmm. I had never, I had never thought about it that way. I never, because I'm always, like, I, I'm, I always, I'm grasping at strings I always want to control everything and I think that um, I just realized that I shouldn't be trying to do that as much. Well actually you can't. Yes. It was lovely. <laughs> that was lovely. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. <laughs>
it's a whole other thing of paperwork. They're thrilled. I mean, they are genuinely thrilled that they're so excited. But they also uh, have to work with the therapist. Each kid there has a therapist. So then the therapist has to evaluate if the kid's participation is going to further their therapeutic process, you know, all, the, all these factors. But this said, they have some wonderfully talented kids. Do we just go stay on the floor? I mean, shit. Yeah, you didn't get up and walk up. Get up and walk up. That's cool. If you're really messed up, then just do that right now and you can work on the transition. Yeah, okay. The next few days you can work on a transition. That'll be cuter. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's he's me there. Okay, we cool? Yes. But for now, just keep it like that. I've been through a lot, like, I'm, my parents were never around, that's hard, and my family was never around. After I was 10, I had no family, I had nobody. And like, I've been through a lot, I've been beaten. When I'm dancing, I express like, it's like I forget about everything. I don't think about nothing but the next move. <laughs> and that's a great feeling, because it's like, it's like all your stress is gone for the moment. It's like therapy. You did good. That you being in the system, not having a support system, or not having people that are gonna help you, you have to like. For me, I have to do it all on my own. I really don't care what other people say. I, you know, I dress the way I do. I do what I do. I like what I do. I'm, I'm very creative, I'm very um, out, you know, it's just, I'm just free. Talk to me for one second, okay, don't worry. So, when, after you get into your practice, that's okay. But we're just showing you a little bit that we have. I need to hear the whole recording, though. I gotta get a time.